Hello and welcome to Talking Dogs on a Monday. Today, of course, we are discussing all matters, the willwego.com Irish St. Ledger from Limerick. A wonderful final at Limerick on Saturday night. It really was a classic uh, decider to uh, to look back on and to remember fondly in years to come, I'm sure. Robert Catterson was the man on ground. Robert is joining us here uh, this hour, this evening, uh, this morning for our language, but, but this evening while you're watching it. And of course, the exile dub, Tommy Lyons, is also here from his y'all base. Gentlemen, a great weekend of sport. Um, Robert, you were down at Limerick. Just a good occasion, but an absolutely belting final. Yeah, absolutely. We were looking forward to the final. I think we, we referred to it on, on Racing Post Graham TV as maybe saving the best to last when it comes to the classic finals, because it was the last classic of 2023. But a huge crowd. The restaurant was packed. We had a, a marvellous final and um, it certainly lived up to its billing. Tommy, it was a it was a competition that deserved this finale. You know, from start to finish, it's been a, a ledger of supreme quality, and I think it's safe to say we got the right result. You know, even in terms of the one, two, three in the final. Yeah, we possibly did. I mean, I mean, it was it was a great. It was just look look at. I don't I don't have the final down as as quite as quite as rated quite as highly as the two of you are, um, because I think it was a kind of a lesser version of the semi final. Uh, the reason being, I just felt that Clan Bryantry didn't produce the same sort of performance as every final, even though there was a kind of sense of deja vu. Swords Rex went back a little bit further, which is a bit unfortunate. It's just the whole the toll of the whole competition. But actually, overall, the competition was so good, you'll have to remember for a long time. I mean, right throughout, it's great. You know, sometimes you can you can you can get away with it and have six good dogs get to a final where a competition hadn't been that deep. But this was deep from the start. This was really deep from the start. The quality of the quality of the of the competition. So it did. It was almost inevitable. It was going to get a good final. To be honest about it, like like you know, you can look at other competitions through the year. And that's not necessarily the case. But I haven't seen I haven't seen a collection of dogs that good in any competition outside the Derby. And because there are greater numbers in the Derby, there this was even because you could argue this was even deeper. It was remarkably good. Remarkably good. Um, in the end, it came down to the two kennel companions, first and second. Um, a second ledger success for Graham Holland, Robert. When you consider, you know, he's had he's had three and four finalists in a, on a few occasions, and you know, he's he's gone very close. He had three of the last five favourites and hadn't won it since Clon Brian Hero back in twenty seventeen. So, like for all that, for all that, it, he 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 was sort of you know he's had a great record in the ledger. This was probably overdue. It was like when you think of it, heading into the ledger final, he'd won more English derbies than he had had won Irish ledgers, um, and that probably tells tells its own story. He's had a lot of finalists, as you said, um, and he had two chances this this year, like he's had in a lot of the, the classic finals. But you know, his two dogs needed to to be at their best. Um, I think if it was run another night, Carl Ramsbottom might have might have been the one celebrating. But that's a testament to the two dogs, especially Clan Brian Treaty, because we've chatted about him earlier in the year and. I know you were a, a big fan of himself and Tommy were sort of saying if he, if he could only get his trapping right. He still hasn't. But when you look at the year that he's had in the end, like he's won 12 times, nine times he's won at Limerick. He's won over 100,000 in prize money and he's now a two-time classic winner. Like he's a serious dog with a serious engine. Um, Sword Rex in fairness to him, you know, what a year he's had. And if you compare his run last Saturday to the semi-final, like he looked beat at the third bend and yet he's come back and given it as all, like, what a dog. I got the impression when Graham was talking about him afterwards, might we see much more of him? I don't know. But, like, between the two of them, they've won over a quarter of a million in prize money this year alone. Like, yeah. that is some I'm, I'm not sure. Like, if we see Swords Rex, it'll be one more time. Yeah. That's, that's, my, that's my take on it. Yeah. I, I was sort of told earlier in the year that had he won the English Derby, and, and it wasn't from direct connections, but it was somebody sure. who would know the connections. They said, like, if he won the English Derby, that would have been that. Um, You know, he's just been, as Tommy alluded to, uh, an incredible greyhound, but he, he's a dog with such good pedigree as well. You know, perhaps he is one for, for stood down the line. Um, Like, while he's beaten the half length, yeah. He's probably an inch or two away from winning it, you know. At that third bend, if he's if he has another two or three inches in hand, he probably gets around, probably holds the dog, and that's mm -hmm. the difference between winning and losing. As it was, Clambrine Treaty, Tommy, you touched upon it a couple of times during the competition. We just wanted to see him drive that third bend like he didn't quite do in Shelburne or Clonmel, but by God, he does in Limerick. Like you know, if the Derby was in Limerick, this dog would be favoured. 
Yeah, look, I don't, I don't personally don't have it down as a Limerick thing that he's just good at Limerick. I, I don't, but his his problem is, and Rob said it rightly there, he still hasn't sorted his trapping. He could have cost him the final. He's fifth out of traps the other night. He had no entitlement to win the to win the ledger, sorry, from, from that position. No entitlement whatsoever. And actually, let's be honest about it, he kind of needed Swords Rex to come back a little bit in terms of what he had been produced in previous weeks for him to win it. Um, I actually was concerned watching the race, and my only bet at the ledger was this, I had a few quid on him at seven to four during the week. I just thought it was a very fair price on on, on well, I thought he was clearly ahead of Swords Rex. He was going to be clearly ahead of Swords Rex if he had if he broke level. That's the way I was seeing it. Now he absolutely walked out, and it wasn't like it's not a big shock around like that. And I think there's no there's no way I can tell you the the the, the section that he was given the other night with the section he was given in the in the semi-finals, two ninety something compared to two eighty five. I'm not having that at all. I mean, I don't know. Those sections have me confused. Those early ones in particular. Yeah, they certainly, but anyway, they certainly do, yeah. Yeah, they, they, they don't make any sense to me. Not, not to my eye, they don't. And look at my eye. Is, if, if you're talking about like lengths and then 0, 0.07 of a second, your eye can be wrong. But like I mean, to my mind, there's no way that he broke better the other night than he did in, in the, the and, and showed the pace of the line the first time. But anyway, the point is, like, like I kind of might have phrased it wrong a minute ago when I was talking about Tom Ryan. Like, it's not that he went back. The, per, the performance was excellent. And he had no entitlement to win the ledger from, from the break. But he... he he made it so hard on himself. And I was still concerned watching the race down to third bend. He's just not as far in front. We're only talking about quarter of a length, maybe not as far in front of, of Sword Rex as he was in the previous round. He nearly got a clip, could have ended his ended his challenge. And then I knew that Sword Rex is going to be coming back. Clam Ryan Treaty, even though his sections in the semi-final in particular said that he's staying a lot stronger than he had been doing. Um I was afraid that, that you know, if you're on Clown Brian Tree, that Swords Rex is going to come back to him because that dog doesn't give up. Like that's the nature of Swords Rex. But but I don't think there's any question that Swords Rex, the toll of 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 a long career and a, a very successful career, and also also that run to the escape. I mean, he was the one that was after. He was after performing a miracle to qualify in the first round. He was after doing two huge clocks early on in the competition. And I just feel that the the the, the at three and a half, almost three and a half years of age, that just the toll that those were taken, you know, that were taken on, on, on Swords Rex. I think, like, what a dog he's been, but but it was just going to be so, so hard for him. Now, I say, I'm like, I'm, I ran down the final a little bit by saying the final itself wasn't as good as, it was a good race. It was a very, very good race. It was close, and there was, there were, there were like uh, two and a half lengths between the first five home. I mean, that's, that's, proper kind of, you know, classic final stuff that you'd like to see for excitement. But I definitely think, you know, on the clock, they all kind of went back a bit. I think that's 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 maybe where I'm looking at. I know sometimes we say that when finals are so tight, but have a look at have a look at some of the heats that right throughout the competition where they weren't like that. So it's um it's a difficult, difficult competition at the end of the year. It's a fair performance. Graham made a point when he was talking to Rob in his interview after the race the other night, that the dog had a problem with, Clan Brian Tree had a problem with his tonsils in the derby. And he said he wasn't starting and he wasn't staying. And definitely the fact that he got his stamina back, because he still isn't starting regularly, his um the fact that he got his stamina back is what won him the ledger the other night. He's a type of dog, if he did have the stamina, the five, five, seven, five, he'd love that longer run to the corner. Because <clears throat> the one thing he does, that final 50 yards into the bend, Robert, he really does charge. Like, this is a dog that would do a serious sprint run, even though he'd probably give him a two-length start. Like, I could see this dog <laughs> winning open sprints. Yeah, no, he's got pace all around, and, you know, we, we've been alluding to missing the kick at the start, but he's not a dog that you'd say, right, he needs to step up the five, seven, five or 600. As you said, you put him in a sprint, and he'd probably do an 18, 50, 18, 60 run. He's just one of those dogs who has it everywhere, except just those first few yards, whatever it is, you know, sober glory, obviously missed it on, on Saturday night, but Van Brian Treaty, he, he, he's never going to ping the lids. Um, he just takes a little bit of time to get his feet together. But when he does, like from that first bend to the third bend, there's probably very few dogs in training that could compete with him. Yeah, he's a homebred Tommy. Um, it's 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 a massive achievement for anybody in the game to win a classic. But when you when you when you've bred them, reared them, you, you've started their training off, and then Jim and, and Mirren Murphy sent them off to to Graham Holland. Um, they tend to do that with the best of them. They knew from the early stages this fellow was fairly special. Um, you know, to have a a double on the night with the other with the with the comrade winning over the seven fifty yard trip, a very special night for the Murphy clan. Yeah, and actually, uh, his great granddad, his great granddad was Trout or Salmon, who was the Dam of Tom Ryan hero. Yeah, who won the ledger for them. So they're, they're they're the same family. Winning two ledgers with the same family effectively is 
is remarkable stuff. And look, he's a terrific dog. We saw it in the final of the Kirby. That was a special performance that night. Um, he was doing it from one, I think, that night, was it? He was doing it from six in the ledger final. So, yeah. um, I mean, there's a lot of things. Like, if he could break, Rob is right. He's not, a, he, he's just, that breaking is, is, a, is a, you just don't know what you're getting. And maybe, maybe when it gets to Shelburne Park, the competition is so hot that he's not getting away with it. But if he could break, if he could break consistently the way he broke in this in the quarter final, there'd be very few dogs in the country could lead him. Yeah, no a derby winner maybe. <laughs> yeah, no question about it. Um, Robert Clombrian Treaty, here we are. You said it. Um, he's won serious amount of money this year. You know what are we talking? One hundred and is it one hundred and seventeen thousand? Yeah. Like, he, like this is a dog that that debuted at Shelburne Park on the twenty fourth of February. And here we are, sort of the last days of November, and and he's sitting on one hundred and seventeen thousand euro and ninety pound or ninety euro. Um, like it's it's an incredible amount of money. Um, and he is basically a first season. Well, he is a first season greyhound. There's no question yeah. about it. He's only in August twenty one. But but as Jim alluded to in your interview, he's only twenty ninth of August. Like so, he might yeah. as well be in September. Like this this is a puppy effectively. Like he's three days away from being puppy derby grade this year. Yeah, he's a sore Rex, I think, of 2024. He, he's going to be Graham's big dog, I think, heading into next year. you got to remember, he also got to a Produce Stakes final when he was a, a red-hot favourite. Like, what a trouble that would have been if he'd have got it right that night to win a Kirby, a Ledger, and a Produce. Um, I'd say if you were betting, he's probably a, a sure enough price favourite to get dog of the year. Um, but what a year he's had. And you'd hope we'd see him on Saturday night at the Winter Festival. But even if we don't, you know, you're, talk- you're looking at Easter Cup who knows after that the way the calendar is but um, I think he's definitely one of Graham's big guns for 2024 yeah you'd imagine the way the calendar is that you know they'll either decide whether the English Derby or the Ledger you know, because mm. the ledger is now a, 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 a you know a, a late summer event next year, like it's taken up the the Irish Derby sort of slot. Um, Tommy, I saw someone tweeting it the other day about, you know, certainly next year it'll be nearly an impossible double the Kirby Ledger double, just given the fact that I think the reason Clambrine Treaty has won this is because there has been a level of maturity, and next year it, it's that two or three months earlier it's going to be very much, very much harder to do. It is, and it goes back a little bit to to what I said about the track and having to go around to the escape, the long one to escape. Kirby, like it was, Mike was talking about a few weeks ago, saying that that sometimes sometimes it's it's the following year when the Kirby winner kind of matures and gives that possibly is down to the fact that it takes a bit of time to recover from what you've had to achieve to win a Kirby because the competition is that strong and it's a tough run, and then. Like if you if you compact it, bring it back a few months between that and the ledger, it's going to be really it's going to take a toll, a real toll. I mean, we talked about Sword Rex, it's because maybe he's three and a half years of age almost. That that that's you know why it, why why it, it, it kind of had an impact on him, the ledger and the long run to the escape and whatever else it is. Um, like if you if you get a young dog in the Kirby and then try to compact it back two or three months, it's going to be borderline impossible. I think there's also a possibility you're talking about Cambrian Treaty being so young. There's also a distinct possibility that a bit more maturity and even a little winter break and he could come back. There's obviously been issues along the way. To, Graham talked about his tonsils and whatever else. That seemed to have a huge impact on such a young dog. There's a possibility that he will find his trapping boots next year and will consistently do it and be a, like he could be, end up being a clear derby favourite in the middle of next year or towards the end of next year. I mean, he's got he's got a bit of time. It's actually an interesting programme next year too. We'll, we'll probably talk about it on a different day, but it's an interesting programme with the derby being so late and it might just change campaigns right throughout the year. It will change campaigns, but it'll just be interesting to see how it works out. But like I say, I'm not ruling out that at the moment his inconsistency at traps is, is going to be an issue forever. It may not be. No, I tend to agree with you. Um, you you made a point there about the Kirby. You know, if the Kirby was worth twenty twenty five thousand, I, I think a lot of people would skip it because obviously yeah. it's very tough on greyhounds. But the fact that it's worth the eighty thousand euro, and as we've said it a number of times in the past, people are buying dogs as Kirby dogs. Like there was a time, oh, buy me a puppy derby dog, or more more importantly, a derby dog. But in recent times, it's more of oh, he's wrong age. He's a December. You know, like yeah, people are, are are willing to pay that extra few quid if they're a January, February, March with a view to having a crack at the Kirby and then having a dog going forward. So I, I think the fact that it is that 80 large, that makes the huge difference. And also, as much as I say it's tough, it's a tough competition because it's a tough track and it is. It also shows this competition has been important for the Kirby, I think, as well, and for, for people lo- looking on. You've had the last two Kirby winners run to within half length of each other in the final of a, of, of a first and second in the ledger. It shows that like a dog that can win a Kirby has got a serious constitution, a dog like that, they have to come out of it and to come out and be able to produce this again. 
like swords wrecks around his heart out. I mean, I know like you can feel from the start of the competition that I was I was against the dog. I was against him winning the competition because I know how much it takes to win a competition like this. And at this stage of his career, he's been a fabulous dog. Like I said last he, week, he's, he's gone to the well. He he's won. gone to the well a lot of times. That that's the issue. But he, do, he, see, he he doesn't he doesn't know how to he doesn't know how to run a bad race. There's no he does, he's never easy on himself either either because he pings out and he stays and he he runs hard the whole time, right? And he has been doing that through the ledger, which is which is you know a long way into his career, coming towards the end of his career. But even think about like. There was a hardship almost in the laurels for him last year because he, at the time he wasn't breaking and he was getting himself into all sorts of bother and having to to to, to you know to to duck and dive to try get through to the final. He was on the luckiest laurels finalist for a long time. Like he 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 showed untold pace from a terrible draw and a bad break. Um, like he's he's in 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 some ways. I have him down as an, an unlucky dog because even though he won a couple of classics and he's hit the crossbar in more classics, like he's remarkably good. I just wish, I kind of wish, not 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 again, nothing against Gay Time and Nemo. I kind of wish he had won that English Derby just to cap his career because, and I do hope sometimes, sometimes with Greyhounds, you know, we, I touched on it here a couple of weeks ago. Sometimes with Greyhounds, they don't they don't get the opportunity to be stud dogs. People kind of wait a couple of years and see what to produce from from the first people who to venture in and say, oh yeah, I I'll give I'll give that. Greyhound a, a try and they have to wait a couple of years to see what it might produce and is it worth going to them. Swords Rex deserves to hit the ground running in that side. And if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. That's the risk you're always going to take no matter where you go with a Greyhound. But I hope Swords Rex because he's been a fabulous Greyhound. I hope the guy gets the chance from the start to have progeny who are like him. Yeah, no question about it. Um, Robert, let's talk about the final itself. Uh, Clombrine Treaty and Swords Rex obviously served it up out the front. It was important that Clombrine Treaty got to Swords Rex when he did um, back in third spot. Sober Glory ran a huge race for Kyle Ramsbottom. He did. Like, you know, there's no real such thing as a moral winner. <laughs> no one really cares about moral winners. But, and I know we're saying we can't really trust the sectionals, but there's no doubt about it. Like, he completely missed the kick. You know, it was a 282 the previous week. It was a 297 last week. Again, we can't really trust the section. But, you know, as Tommy said, you believe your eye. And the one night he couldn't afford to miss it, he missed it. Like he seemed, we were talking about, you know, dogs having long ears and coming right at the right time. He was a dog peaking at the right time in this competition. You know, 2940 the week before in the semi final. Carl had alluded to, you know, his dog hadn't been firing in the weeks prior to that. But, you know, he said on Saturday night, this dog is bouncing. He couldn't have had him in a, in a better place. And when you think he's beaten a length and a half after being completely left, he's given Sword Rex and Clombrine Treaty half a dozen lengths. Um, I think it was a major there for the taking for Carl for Ramsbottom because he doesn't get too many chances. Um, and, I, you know, there's we can all say, oh, he was the best dog in the night. That doesn't really matter. But I just think that... He was, it wasn't a hard luck story. It was just those early yards just didn't go his way. But listen, I think this is a dog going places. I think in 2024, he's a dog worth following. And if he turns up on Saturday night in the Winter Festival, whether it be 550 or whatever, whatever race Carl's going to run in, I think he might be a dog um, who just might have the last laugh. He was. Um, I just thought he was the best dog on the night. And it just... That break just counted against him. I think I think you're right in the sense where he should have a big year next year. There'll have plenty of bites of the cherry with this dog. Like they yeah. can go for a, a number of the big competitions. Like you'd you'd certainly bring him to the Easter Cup. You definitely have to consider the English Derby strong running inside race or um you know Derby later in the year. And then whatever the likes of you know, perhaps a race to champions the, the stakes like that, champion stakes perhaps. But but Tommy there is an inherent need for a little bit of luck with a dog like this anyway, because we've always said he lacked that yard to the opening corner. Like the engine is definitely there. Um, I, I I noticed when I was doing the report from Kenny, let's say, on, on Friday night, that Carol's dogs had just sort of come through the, the mire a little bit. His dog's been running very poorly for two or three weeks. And on Friday night, a couple of much improved performances by a couple of his dogs in the deadly, the valuable deadly kennel stake down there. And, you know, sober glory. Like it is a case of what could have been. It was a huge run by a dog who has a remarkably big engine. And I have absolutely no doubt of all the runners in the in the final of the ledger, he's one that will certainly be going to the winter racing festival, I'd imagine. Well, like like what Rob says is borne out by the times. If you look at it, look at his runs in Limerick, 30 11, 29 94, 29 70, 29 40, 
and then does a twenty nine sixty one when everything goes wrong from effectively. Like he's he was he was the one that was stepping right, and you can see actually one of the most fascinating things about the ledger final was the was the market, and I know the markets can be funny, and sometimes when I watch the race about TV, there's so many fluctuations. That's a typical way on market, especially especially when the exchange is involved, as it is when it's on TV. Well, well, I took screenshots literally as they were going into traps just because I thought I was fascinated by them. Ballabola, Una, 10, 7, 8, 7, 6, right? Return, 6, is, this is just pretty off. I don't know what they returned. Sober Glory, 9 to 4, out to 7 to 2. Yeah. Lost Rex, 11 to 4, out to 130. Beepers Larry, 25 to 1, into 9 to 1. Uh, Mr. Chelm, 12 to 1, solid, 12, 10, 12. And Clambrian Treaty, 11 to 8, out to 6 to 4. Now, on the exchange, they took a screenshot just at the off as well. 8 to 1, Ballabola, Una, just over 5 to 1, 6.2, Sober Glory. 4.7 Sword Rex, 13.5 Bieber Larius, 16.5 Mr. Chelm, who actually ran a really good race as well. Yeah. And Clan Bryan Treaty was a solid 2.54. That's really where they wanted to be. I think, I know, I know that there was a, effectively, it looks like a massive gamble on Bieber Larius. I do know the lads who would be control the prices in, in, in to a large degree in Limerick were, were expecting something from Bieber Larius. And I said, maybe, perhaps it was their money, maybe taking a chance at the big prices, 25s and the likes of that. But, um, it was just fascinating, fascinating market uh, on Saturday night. It really was. Uh, I I fell into it. You know, I I just couldn't believe that Swords Rex was such a price. I think I was close right. to I was close to five on the exchange when I when I just dipped my toe in. Just I just thought it was a crazy price for a dog who I thought would be in front. And you know, I'm I'm more than willing to take, like if they ran it again next week, the same price, I'd definitely have a go at him. You know, just given the fact that he was the price he was, like beating the half length, he runs a remarkable race. But I, I think you're right, Tommy. Uh, Mr. Chalmer in a huge race. Uh, Beepers Larry, mm. Jack, young Jack Canelli, like this fella has a future. Like he needed to do everything right in the night. He pops out. He's banged there in these first few strides. Like he he runs prominent into the corner. Balnabal Luna came away well. The only dog that really sort of missed the kick and yet ran a huge race is Sober Glory, as we've alluded to. Like nothing was left to the sidelines here. Like you can safely say, like even the dog in last and the dog in second last, they all ran their races. Yeah, I think I they did. And Beaver's Larry flew out and actually showed pace into the bend. I just thought, like when I was talking to, to that, that man last week from, from the track, I was kind of saying he was putting the case forward for Beeper Larry. I said, you just, he just can't clear Swords Rex. That's the problem. Swords Rex, you, you, you could set your set your watch by Swords Rex in the early stages. He's going to pop out and run his race and that's it. We knew or we suspected he was going to be coming back a little bit, and which is what happened in terms of just over the course of the competition. Um, but he was going to do what he did the other night. He was going to break and give himself every chance um, I thought I thought they they all ran a cracking race. Beeper Larry just just couldn't get that run into the bend and maybe lost it, lost maybe too much ground around the first two bends. Uh, a little bit easier than you would like now. I'd be honest about it. If I mean, if if I've been entirely harsh about it, but I thought I actually thought I know Sober Glory was a bit unlucky and all that. But Mister Chelm, who 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 I who I'd been kind of pushing a little bit early in the competition and then completely gone off. I thought he couldn't possibly win or do anything from the in the final from the draw. He ran a super. He showed all sorts of pace. Now he's the same age as as Swords Rex. I think if I remember right, I think about July July twenty early. Oh, I think they are. Um, so it's like it's hard. <clears throat> it's hard to say that he's going to be improved in this stage. But I actually thought he ran a hell of a race for a dog that was complete outside of the field. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, geez, I was just watching it back there again, like super glory. Like <laughs> where he came from, <laughs> it's yeah. actually banana town. Um, and if you look, Ian, if you look at the escape, I know we're always saying, "Oh, look at the escape," but like as soon as the camera goes back to the field, like he's three clear. At the yeah. first bend, the find the next time round. I'm like you, Robert. I'm like you. I always looked at the escape, but I, yeah. who who was it you used to tell me you don't get paid in the escape? Oh. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> I'd be a devil for getting stuck into the escape, and then people, yeah, yeah, you don't get paid in the escape. Um, a tremendous ledger final, uh, Tommy. You know. It's a competition we'll look back on, um, and I'm sure we'll, we'll be seeing plenty more of these dogs, that are, or some of these dogs, obviously two or three of them. It, it was actually a relatively old final when you consider the likes of Swords Rex and Mr. Chelm. Sort of often often we get a situation where it's a lot of first season dogs, but the fact that these dogs were, were true second season greyhounds, you know, suggests that it was a mix there of, of experience and, you know, and youth and brilliance. It was a, it was a proper derby feel about it. That's what it was. Proper, you know, sometimes you will get a, you will get a young dog in a derby and whatever else coming through, and that's important too. But there was a proper derby feel about this that there was real quality, depth of quality of dogs we we 
most most of the dogs we knew very very well and and knew what they were capable in that. Do you know what? Just to just just to put a final word in Swords Rex with any bit of luck, he could be a five time classic winner, yeah. five time yeah. <laughs> English Derby Ledger and Laurels should have been his. Produce been his. Produce stakes. Produce stakes. Well, yeah. It's two to yeah. five in the Produce final. He's just got no run. Six, you know I mean? six, <laughs> it'll be a six time, a six time classic winner. <laughs> I'll tell you yeah. one thing. I'll tell you one thing. You know, if he does go to stud and whatnot, not going to be hard to write an ad, is it? <laughs> <laughs> I could do that one. <laughs> you can just write swords, right? And leave it at that. When, when, yeah, but when you hear Graham Holland saying, we were talking to you, Rob, the other night, he was saying, like, like uh, they're hard to come by dogs like him. Yeah, yeah. No no doubt. And the night uh, he won the Easter Cup, like we were saying, and myself and him were chatting, that's the night he said, you know, he's going to the English Derby. But that, that, that night... And Graham doesn't really mince his words. He pretty much said, "This is the fastest dog probably I've ever had." Yeah, and funny enough, like for all that he won these to cup in good style, like, you could see he was only getting to form at that point in the final. Like he was only coming at to hand, and that was proven when he got the toaster because he was just different gravy through the opening rounds of toaster. Yeah. Like when you consider like that, that is a real sort of miscarriage of justice in a sense where his displays through the Easter or the, through the English Derby deserved to see him pop out and make every inch and, and mm-hmm. land the spoils and forever be known as an English Derby champion. But no, what a greyhound! But as it is, we have an exciting dog to look forward to, Clambrine treaty um a hint the other night i think Miran murphy said it to a couple of people that they'll be hoping to run about the winter racing festival great to see him there um whether swords rex has a swan song there or whether this was a swan song i don't know listen whatever <laughs> we'll, we'll give him a good send-off have no fear yeah but i tell you i hope um <laughs> like i've been banging on about how i'm not absolutely not convinced whatsoever the clambrine treaty the limerick dog the, the type of pace he has is just he can go anywhere right but like I'd be mad to, to oppose him in the winter racing festival. <laughs> that's, yeah. that's just me. I'm sorry, but that's just me. I just just because because like if he breaks like he did in the quarterfinal, Rob will probably agree. If he breaks like the quarterfinal, he'd probably win whatever he runs in. But if he breaks like he did in the semi-final or final, he won't win. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Robert, um, you were there in Limerick the other evening. Cold, um, was it a cold evening? But there was a good crowd. Oh, ah, yeah, it wasn't too it wasn't too bad. It was dry, um, which was the main thing. Um, great crowd, restaurant was full. Um, the timing with the ledger is great because obviously it's late November, so you got all the Christmas lights up. Everyone's in good form. Like in fairness to to Jody and the team, what a card considering it was the week before the Winter Festival. Like the open sprint, are we going to get an open a better open sprint next Saturday in in, in Shelburne? You'll mm-hmm. do well. Um, you had the open bitch race. Um, it was just like the ledger final. Like I'd say, there's every chance if if all six greyhounds are, are okay since Saturday night, there must be every chance we're going to see all six on Saturday night at Shelburne. Like it was a brilliant, brilliant card, brilliant final, um, brilliant night. And um when you look at where the ledger's placed next year, um, we might even have a better ledger this yeah, perhaps, you know, next year. Perhaps you, you you might have been in a situation where one or two people are keeping the cards close to their chest if they've gone for the English Derby and whatnot. Yeah. But yeah, every every chance that it it, it will be a, a cracking ledger again next year. Um, obviously the the changes to Limerick track over the years have made a big difference. You know, it's there's a lot more confidence in the track than there used to be. I, I thought the track looked wonderful on TV again the other night, Tommy. Yeah, it did. And and, and like in, in general, the, the race and through, through the competition was very clean, and that's what you want. Um, you couldn't be unhappy with it. And a dog, a wide seed, a wide seed wins the final ledger as well. Yeah. Um, a very valid. You know, point, yeah, a lot of a lot of a lot of positives out of it. Really, really yeah. well. It was let, it was terrific start. Let's finish, take a as let's take yeah, let's take a quick look at the undercard. Um, obviously Neil O'Connell had some start at the evening. Robert he won the first three races. Kilcolgan Zuis, Kilcolgan Chief, and um, rallying Rocket winning the the Novice Seven Fifty. Uh, a great start. Obviously a local man, Neil, and it was great to see him getting the you know a, a nice few quid for himself. Each of those races worth two thousand euro. Like yeah. there's some money on the undercard. It has to be mentioned. Then we get into the um, the Con Murphy Bookmaker Spikes uh, comp- uh, contest. Uh, went to Barefoot Awesome. Like this fellow won in twenty eight fifty, but I think he's better for. I think he's better for. Um, yeah. God, the pace he showed down the back straight and a, and a son of good Cody. We haven't seen too many of them, Tommy. If you were had good Cody at stud, you'd be more than delighted with the performance of Barefoot Awesome the other evening. You would. Um, and another another terrific dog, a dog that, that showed a bit of longevity as well, and and kept his kept his ability for uh, right throughout his career. Good Cody. Um, I would again 
like I, I don't look at I'm not involved in how how it works, but he's another dog I would have liked to have seen get a good chance to to succeed. Sometimes, like I think this the the, the stud career with Greyhound is very short, and if you if you're going to wait the first two two and a half two and a quarter years to kind of figure out whether there are any you know what they're producing is any good, you're wasting a lot of time. It's just yeah. a shame. It's a, it's it's a difficult game. It's a difficult one to get into. It's amazing that Ruby Sydney broke through the way he did or or had such an impact like that. He like he's an exception, I suppose, but. Um, although we have to say, of course, we didn't mention that it was a Pastana beating all the Ruby Sydney's in the final of the ledger the other, the other night. Uh, not for the first time. Um, he's made a good yeah. start. Uh, Road Exile, uh, Robert, you alluded to it. It was a wonderful, wonderful open sprint. Balnakil Alpha was obviously the warmer favourite, but just on his heels in the market was Burgess Jack, who had won the uh, sprint on... It had been the charity night, not the ledger yeah. final. It was the charity night he won the. You were down there, yeah. Yeah, he won, and it was un- unbelievable that night, winning in eighteen forty three. And you think, wow, that's a serious run. And then Road Exile pops up at nine to two and beats the two of them fast in the stride. He had been just a little bit off the boil since going out in Dundalk um, yeah. earlier in the year when he did those two or three magnificent runs. And you'd imagine, like obviously, all guns blazing now for Winter Racing Festival. Strong chance the top three there, Balakil Alf, Burgess Jack, and of course the winner Road Exile will be at Shelburne Park next Saturday night. Absolutely. I think it's 1841 is is five spots off the clock. Um, brilliant. It had been a similar scenario to the race that um he took on Balnikil Alf the week before. He popped out, Balnikil Alf missed a break, and you you know, obviously what Balnikil Alf did the week before was brilliant. But I suppose the difference was Road Exile was probably a much better dog um in Limerick. Um because he'd been the sprinter we were all talking about, as you said, a couple of months previous. He was dominating the sprinting scene. He had gone off the ball, there's no doubt about it. Um, but, you know, if he pops out and uh, and does something similar next Saturday night in Shelburne, it doesn't matter what's in against him. Finally, he's, he's an airplane. But a little bit like Lombrine Treaty, he's just, he seems to be a dog who's never going to fly out in a sprint. He's always going to be giving his opposition a head start. And if you're doing that against Road, Road Exile or even Burgess Jack, you're probably not going to, to pick them up on, on most nights. No, certainly not. Um, you got a bit of a scoop after this race, wasn't it? Well, or maybe it was before the race. I'm not sure. You spoke to Pat Buckley, and Pat suggested yeah. that he will be going to the English Derby next year. That's big news. You would imagine he won't be the only one that will be journeying to England next year. You know, that didn't go this year. We could have a huge, huge team at Toaster this year, or in, in 2024. Uh- yeah, because obviously I wanted to, to find out the story about uh, Balan Abul Ed. See, was he on course for next Saturday? He's not. He obviously picked up an injury that the night he was picked up in, in the Irish Derby final, which um, I suppose it doesn't, it's not much consolation, but at least we all know why he was picked up. I, a lot of us were thinking it was the, it was the, the travelling to Nottingham and, and probably took its toll, and that probably did, but I suppose Pat was looking for a more genuine reason and he found it. And yeah, he just sort of threw in, we'll be aiming him at the English Derby. I sort of have to ask him again. <laughs> You know, did I pick it up right? And yeah, he's uh, he's all gung ho. He uh, he didn't mince his words to say he's not in favour of the new date for the Irish Derby. Um, but it's definitely um, yeah, what's our Irish Derby's loss might be Toaster's gain, and it looks as though the Buckley Big Guns are are going to be travelling next year. Yeah, Tommy, um, it's great when you do an interview like that. Someone just throws in something right out of the blue, and you know, you go, God, I wish you hadn't told the world because you know, if I like, certainly from you or me, like that's something we'd be writing the next morning if if you hadn't told the world, yeah. just whispered it to you. Change, changing words in that sense, yeah. yeah. Um, the road exile is a fair dog. I think you were saying that he's kind of he kind of had lost his form a little bit after getting knocked out, but the, like you kind of have to pick it with sprinters, and and I presume this is a this is a like to kind of get the best out of the dog next year. He's keeping the sprinter for the moment, which is going to benefit him, I think, next year. He's a dog, obviously, that started in, in Yall, the 29-22 and a 5 5 winning by a distance for Andy Lynch. Um, he sold, he sold a, I think, a two, a, a little brother to, to, uh, to Pat at the same time, actually. Yeah, it was, two a very Di, smart Di, dogs. was it Papa Dioro? Yeah, Papa Dioro, yeah. yeah Papa who, Dioro, who actually, yeah. who actually so, was very close to winning the Classic at Sunderland's last week or the week before. Um, so Pat, Pat's moved him on. But um, yeah, his new connections nearly got an, a, a wonderful twist out of him. Only kill out then, of course, would, would 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 break your heart a little bit because the pace is there. Like the pace is there, but just that trapping at the moment, at the moment. And it can, it can change and look at it like, yeah, he's, 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 it's funny. It's funny when it comes to the sprint and the, the night of stars or the, the racing festival, you just be wondering like, which of them is going to break, or what's going to what's going to happen? It's going to be difficult. It'll be competitive betting heat. That's what I think, anyway. Yeah, no, no question about it. Um, 
others on the card. Annual Coco repelled the challenge of Bob's Day Dream. It was a fine display by her. Um, we have to mention Blackstone Lacey, of course. Tommy, we've been talking about her for a few weeks at this point. Um, I, I, I actually put up on Twitter, and I wouldn't normally do this sort of stuff, but Ben's Teddy was 8 to 15, 4 to 7, and I just put up he's a crazy short price, especially if 3 or 5 get in front of him. 3 and 5 both got in front of him, and Blackstone Lacey, 32 or 5, a new track record. Just a stunning performance by a very exciting bitch. Cat out of the bag, Ian. Yeah, cat, cat out of the bag. Out of the bag. <laughs> too, too, too early. Too early, yeah. Be interesting to see what they go for uh, next week, so. Yeah, very much so. Like, obviously, she'd go for the 600 now if she wished, but I'd still love to run her in a, a 750. <laughs> you know, take a chance. Um, so nice. Robert, she was she very... Actually, she, go ahead, sorry, Tommy. Sorry, Ian. What she has done, and we talked about it last week, she broke well last week. She broke better the other night. And if she's going to start doing that, well, goodbye, because she gallop all day. Yeah, all day and all night. Uh, Gay time, you go around a good second. Ben Steady back in third. He really had no chance from the start. Like, you don't pick up those dogs, uh, you know, when they get out in front of you. Uh, Clan Brian Ollie was very well uh, touted in the in Nova 750. At one to four, he duly obliged. Sonia and Grande um, finished off proceedings on RPG TV. Um, Robert, he's been a, a crack of little dog for, for, for the boys and for Jack Canelli. Um, obviously, they went to England with them. I thought it was a fine run the other night to pick up Bob Slate, Sid. Yeah, he's had a great year. Jack's had a great year. We're chatting on Beeper, you know, about Beeper's Larry. What a year he's had. Started off with a juvenile classic. You know, he's been to Toaster, got to a, a Michael Fortune champion place. We ran in the curb, you know. You said Jack is, he's a he's he's a man going places. I think he's already there mm-hmm. <laughs> because he's, um you know, getting to a ledger final. Um, Sonia and Grandy, he's, he's loads of other good dogs. You know, he's going to have a lot of good years to come. And Sonia Grandy, you'd have to think he's going to be a, a dog who could line up in, in a couple of races at the Winter Festival next Saturday. Yeah, no question about that. Um, let's move on. A great night at Galway, or at, at, at Limerick, shall we say. Um, tremendous work. And a ledger we'll look back on very fondly. Let's touch on Galway, gentlemen. Drubby's mandolin. Uh, Julie completed her march to the Galway Oaks. She's an exceptionally talented lady, Tommy Lyons. I would say we'll see plenty of this lady in the coming weeks and months. She's a leading contender already for next year's Oaks. Um, you'd imagine she'll be rocking up at Shelburne Park next weekend. Uh, terrific. Um, and, and clearly... Not entirely suited by trap one, come out, go middle a little bit around the bend. If she gets a better angle into that, into that bend, what, what time is she going to do? But I think I think what's what's coming out of this again, and we talked about it a bit last year, is 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 how good Galway is. Really, really impressed by it. It's not a track we see very much of. Very impressed, I have to say. Very much so. It just looks a Beautiful galloping circuit, Robert. Um, you know, the few times I've been down in Galway, I've thoroughly enjoyed the action. And they really do deserve to welcome the best dogs down there. They do. And didn't they get Rahamofo with it last year in the, the same competition? Like, they're getting the some of the best bitches around. Um, great to see Robert Gleeson bag another one. He went uh, a little while without uh, bagging a big one. And now he's bagged a, a national puppy at Galway Oaks. And he might be adding another national puppy to his CV in the next few days. But, uh, yeah, it seems to be a great competition to Galway Oaks. Great to see a good winner. You know, she went unbeaten in, in the competition. Um, she's a fair tool now, <laughs> as you alluded yeah. to beforehand. And uh, yeah, the Galway Oaks is uh, it's definitely holding its uh, holding its own when it comes to big competitions. Yeah, I think it's time they squeezed in a Connacht Derby. Uh, I think I think it'd be great to see some of the top dogs going down there, even just uh, you know a sort of race of champions Very style run. event, two runs, something like that. <clears throat> 12, 12 of the best dogs, or eighteen of the best dogs in the country. You know, Galway can certainly hold it. Um, well done to all involved. A tremendous competition and a tremendous winner in Drubby's Mandolin. And again, congratulations to Fones on their sponsorship. Uh, it really is greatly received. Let's get to the action from Shelburne Park, gentlemen. A few fantastic runs on the undercard before we we get into the national puppy stake fashion model was a brilliant winner of the opening race in the card over 600 yards I've been a big big fan of this lady from the start 32-30 for the 600 yard um, distance she appreciated the long run to the corner much like her mother did could have any chick once she got to the front she stretched on to win by six lengths 32-30 in that sort of cold weather um, is a hell of a run uh, let's go bubbles won the second heat of course puppy oaks winner earlier in the year and a certain Rye Hope Beach in second spot Tommy I'm afraid He's, he's he's in the black book for the wrong reasons. He he mind himself in the opening corner, minds himself in the third bend. His engine is there, and he may well win the final. Um, but uh, once bitten, twice shy. <laughs> once once bitten, <laughs> twice shy. <laughs> yeah, well, about about about, um, about ten times bitten you this stage. This stage, <laughs> yeah, frustrating, frustrating. But it's okay. They have a, they have a, a neighbor deputy and his sister, so <laughs> yeah. and his and his brother. 
<laughs> well, and sorry, not the same kettle, of course. Sober Glory is very much the standout with with Blackstone Lacey you now on the litter. Imagine I told you wouldn't even be the fastest in this litter uh, when he when he sort of first appeared yeah. on the scene. It, do you know what? It's it, like look, it's 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 there, there, there are animals at the end of the day, and and, and you know. You have to go back to, to, to what happened in Tralee. It's obviously left its mark, yeah. unfortunately. Yeah. The ability men, is still men, there. Men, men, mental, mental scarring. Mental scarring. It, it, like, it's, a, it's a very young stage of his career for it to happen, and it's just desperately unfortunate because there's a dog of, of, of Derby quality, Derby ability. So look at it. It, it, it is, it, you know, he's the type of one that would frustrate, I'm sure, connections because you you probably never get out of what he could have had or, or, or does have in terms of ability. You just, you just There's nothing you can do about it. Can, the best yeah. trainers in the world can't can't do anything about that. Project five seven five and six hundred is now scrapped. Seven fifty, Tommy's the future. I like I like um I, I'd like to mention Doc Technic Diva. She won the third heat. She was left six lengths. And she wins six lengths. Now, granted, plenty went in her favour, but she's been a, a, a favourite of mine for quite some time. She'd only won one race prior to this. That's due to her racing style, but like 600 yards is uh, every, like she wants every inch of it. And she certainly is one that I would be. If she was mine, she'd be over 750 at this stage. Uh, mm-hmm. I wouldn't have run her in this. I would have run her in the novice 750, but you know that's me. Um, the sprint was won by New Lion Blake and Ballymun Boy. Ballymun Boy coming home very strongly to pick up New Lion Blake for the pair to dead heat. Elsewhere on the card, the thoroughly likable lot of other news. Sean Conway has his dogs in absolutely unbelievable order for the last four or five months. I listened to Barry's podcast with him. I believe he did time with, with Graham Holland. It, it's certainly rubbing off. He's a very talented greyhound man. He's had a lot of winners at Shelburne Park this year from limited enough runners. Um, clearly a young man with a, with a bright future as a tra- trainer. Uncle Tom won well for Mark Robinson, of course, and Mark, a, a Derby winning trainer. Kunok Mary returned to her very best, winning in 28-31. She looked a real star earlier in the year. She's obviously coming back from season or, or problem or whatnot. Romeo Kingpin has found his trapping boots. He won well in Stories Law. Great to see Gavin O'Mahony having a winner at Shelburne Park on Saturday night. Gavin puts a lot of money back into the game in terms of sponsorships and dogs that he's bought over the years. So great to see uh, Gavin having a winner for Mertlahi. Uh, let's get to the National Puppy Stake. Um, two semi semi-finals. Finals. The opening semi final was won by YI Bonnie Ladd. He's an absolute professional. 28 27. I didn't think he was doing the clock, to be honest. Doing an Ellie Fred, who really caught the eye in the previous week, was second throughout. Clone of Duke Curley missed the kick completely. Um, moved himself into third spot after traffic on the opening corner. Looked certain to qualify in third, but sadly, Barefoot and Fire had been taking a tumble at the opening corner, turned back the track, and ran up in front of the stand. Robert, as a result of this, where we're not talking about YI Bonnie Ladd and Doon and Fred, two very exciting prospects. But as you said, really good winner. Um, obviously, he'd come here after winning the, the Paddy Merriman. Um, he's a dog in really good form. He improved vastly from his run the, the previous week. And we don't see, um, we do see it, but we don't see it enough. Um, dogs with his breaking ability and a, and a consistent pace at Shelton, or at Shelburne, like you look at his last four sectionals, and one of those are, are below the two-second barrier. Now, no, we've been, we've been given out about the consistency of the sectionals, but this lad is a flying machine to the first bend. Um, he's a dog definitely going the right place. And, you know, I don't know how many times it's happened over the years that trainers went back to back national puppies, but Robert Gleason has got a big chance of doing it. He certainly does. He's a dog with, with tremendous, um, tremendous professional, but tre- like obviously early speed is, is where it is. But he's also hard enough to pass for a dog that you think is a bit vulnerable in the closing yards. He, he keeps digging in. Um, the son of Bally Cash is certainly one to keep an eye on. Back in third, Jim by two qualifies. Obviously, very lucky to qualify, but you know. You know, he, he'll certainly finish a lot closer to 15 lengths third, um, no question about it. Second heat was won by Scooby Countess. Um, 28-46 off the front, Tommy. Uh, she is definitely one for the future. I honestly thought she'd be doing faster when, when she got loose on the on the bunny, but you know, that's the way it goes. They all squeezed up in behind in good time, slipped around in second. I, I thought of Murr Hurt thing. Um, he's been crucified since his winning debut. I think he's a dog with a very big future. I thought he ran a hell of a race in third here. He did run a hell of a race in his right. Uh, the winner, the winner. Came off the came off the rails about 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 half a dog with only it's proper professional tracking really is what it is for that age and probably going to tighten up even more so uh, a very dangerous kind of bitch to come up against in any race because she she does track that well um a bit like you Ian I was a bit surprised that the clock wasn't maybe maybe three or four lengths faster but I don't yeah. really, you're not really going to worry about it at that stage of her career she's so young she's a January pup um and it only has six or seven runs so she's tired to continue to improve and I think. You know, Jennifer knows what she's doing. It's, it's about it's about improving her through next year as well. 
She'll need a similar start next week. She's in trap one. Why mm-hmm. the eye Bonnie Ladd is in two. Jim by two and three. Uh, in good time is in four. Um, Omer Hurtig in five and Dunan Lady Fred in six. Obviously, the betting will probably suggest this between the inside two and the outside two, with the inside two favouring the betting. You'd imagine um, Scooby Countess and Y.I. Bonnie Ladd. I'm not sure who will make favourite. Maybe just Scooby Countess, the fact that she's drawn the inside of Y.I. Bonnie Ladd, but she'll want to be hitting the lids like she did the other evening. Jim by two in a good time will be biggish prices in the middle. I think Omer Hurtig and Dunan Ellie Fred. I think they're two greyhounds worth keeping an eye on. Dunan Ellie Fred already has a 28.30 odd around Shelburne Park. Omer Hurtig is a, an estimated 28.45. Now, I, I'd put estimated in between my, uh, you know, I hate doing that, but I, I, I rated an awful lot slower that night when he made his debut than, than the stewards on duty did. They're a nice bunch. It's probably not the final we, we thought we'd have. We wanted the likes of Clonic Curly there because he really is a dog with a very, very big future, be it it will be over 550 yards and perhaps even further. He's going to need to find a, an extra career in those early yards, but one to look forward to. It'll be part of next Saturday night's Winter Racing Festival at Shelburne Park. We have about two or three minutes to talk here, Robert. Um, the Winter Racing Festival is firmly taken over now from the Night of Stars. We were both obviously well involved in the Night of Stars for many years, um, both committee members. And, you know, when we did pass it on, it was time the work my father put into it. Um, it couldn't be replicated by me, you, Pat O'Donovan at the time. It, it just had to be moved on. And I, I'm glad that the board took up the bat. And, and they've run with the Winter Racing Festival. And the idea that the two nights really works. Um, obviously, I, I prefer the six championship races worth 10 grand. But, you know, there's still a lot of money up for offer. A lot of 10 grand races still. Um, it's a very important part of the calendar now. It is. Like, not many nights rival the Irish Derby final night. Um, but, you know, the, the Night of Stars or the Winter Festival has certainly done that. Um, and even last year, the first night or the first year that we had the, the two-night festival, like the, the, the first night was a brilliant night. As you said, it gives those maybe not competing at the top of the tree a, a chance to, to shine and a chance to, to get a bit of the pie on, on these big nights. It was a brilliant night. Um, it's a great sort of appetizer to what's to come the following night. Like, listen, there's no doubt about it. All the big names will be running on Saturday night. But, you know, the two nights, it's brilliant. It's a real festival. Um, it's a great part. Or it's a great end to the year. Um, obviously, the, the the English are going to come. We've got a couple of UK challengers already on the Saturday night. Um, it's got a bit of everything. But as you said, you know, the night of stars was the Breeders' Cup, as your dad said when he came up with this um, this great idea all those years ago. We've had some brilliant performances, some great memories. It's now maybe at a, just gone up that little bit more because of the two nights. And, you know, Friday and Saturday night, Race and Post Greyhound TV have taken both on board. And... Um, We've got two brilliant nights to look forward to. Yeah, there will be one or two races where dogs will sidestep the the main challenge to try and pick up that little bit of easy cash, Tommy. That's the only place where I have a you know it's a bit like Cheltenham where you've introduced the the you know the Ryanair and the the mayor's, know, the, mid, the, the mayor's hurdle and things like that. Um, but like we should still have some unbelievable greyhounds in action. Oh, we will, and 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 it'll be. I think I'm even looking at it from within kennel, they'll be they'll be they'll be spending the, the next few days trying to figure out which race they prefer to go in and how to keep them apart and keep give them the best opportunity to win. Um I look at I, I've talked about it so much in the last year that the, the, the depth of quality in the country is so high, you can't help but have a, a an unbelievable night's racing. They've got the quality there. So, you know, you have to qualify for a derby final, a ledger final, a laurels final. Here you have a chance to get in here. As being a top dog, there's no look look required apart from maybe if it's, if it's oversubscribed in the race you want to get into. But like the chances are, like there's going to be six absolute top drawer dogs against each other, greyhounds against each other, um, in race after race after race. So I I I I'm, well, I'm looking forward to it. I don't know if I'll be able to get there. I'm hoping I will. I have to be in Fairy House next week as well, and I've got kids playing about three hundred matches next weekend. So. <laughs> <laughs> trying to trying to keep on top of it all. Yeah, life tends to get in the way, Tommy. I'll be there. Oh. You'll, be, you'll be glad to hear. And, and Rob will be there interviewing yeah. everyone that mocks. Um, it will be on Racing Post Greyhound Television. But again, we urge you, if you can get to Shelburne Park, oh, it's yeah. Friday and Saturday night. There's yeah. nothing like being there, especially on the Saturday night. It's a special, special occasion. And as Robert alluded to earlier on with, with Limerick, the Christmas lights will be up. There'll be a real festival occasion upstairs in the suites and downstairs will be the doggy crowd. And just a wonderful, wonderful night. You'll have plenty of visitors over from the UK. And it really does add to the occasion, whether we have that many on the track. I don't know. I think two is about 
uh, all it looks like at present. You never know what might happen in the coming days, but at the moment it looks like just two runners from the UK, but they're two very talented trackers. Drupi's clue in particular, we are looking forward to seeing. He was a sensational winner of the ledger. But that's it from us. My thanks again to the cast, uh, Robert Catterson for all his work at Limerick. And of course, we'll, uh, we thank him in advance for his action at Shelburne Park on Friday and Saturday night, keeping us up to date with uh, how the, the trainers see it. And Tommy Lyons, the exile dub, whether he gets to Shelburne Park on Saturday night or not, we'll certainly be talking about it next Saturday or next Monday uh, with us here on Talking Dogs in Monday. But that's it from us on this uh, Monday evening. Good luck. Good evening. God bless. 